Torontonians are flocking to see the giant rubber duck that's moored in the lake just off of uh, Toronto. Why is it there? Well, somehow it has been selected to, to represent Canada's celebrating 150 birthdays. Uh, nobody seems to know why that duck was invited. It cost about $200,000 to rent and people are upset. Well, not me. I don't mind that duck at all because I have a special relationship with ducks. Why do I have that? Well, believe it or not, it all started with this product, Ocelococinum, a homeopathic remedy. Homeopathy is scientific absurdity. It is the idea that existing diseases can be cured by non-existent molecules. Uh, extreme dilutions of substances are used, and in this case, it is a dilution of the extract of the liver and heart of a duck. But the dilution is so extreme that one duck could furnish this, quote, remedy for the whole world for many, many years. So uh, I think that this is a lot of quackery. And that's why I got into collecting ducks, because to me, they represent quackery, and the growth of my flock represents the growth of quackery out there. And it is fascinating how many quack products there are today, all kinds of things from electrical gizmos to double helix water, which is supposed to treat absolutely everything. It treats nothing. So there's a tremendous growth of, of quackery, and that's why I, I collect these guys, and I have all kinds of ducks. I have ducks that quack. I have ducks that you can eat. I have metal ducks. I have duct tape. I have wooden ducks. I have ducks that are made of golf clubs. I have ducks with moving heads. I have ducks that giggle when you tickle them. I have ducks that you wind up. And to me, what these represent is the tremendous breadth of quackery that is out there. And uh, what we do through our office here is really battle that kind of, of quackery. And that's why I do appreciate the giant duck that is in Toronto. It is called a rubber duck, but in fact, it is not a rubber duck. It is made of PVC polyvinyl chloride, like uh, this guy is. There actually are real rubber ducks, but they are quite rare because the plastic ones are easier to make and they're more hardy. But the original rubber ducks uh, were really rubber. That takes us back to the middle 1800s when Charles Goodyear first vulcanized rubber by heating latex with, with sulfur and made usable rubber. And the first rubber ducks were actually chew toys, maybe for duck, dogs and children. It isn't really clear. But since that time, of course, there has been a duck explosion. There are even books about ducks. This one here is all about uh, a story that occurred in 1992 when a container full of, quote, rubber ducks spilled into the ocean in the Pacific during a storm. And 30,000 of these guys were released. And oceanographers loved that because they were able to track their trail around the world. And some of them, believe it or not, ended up in Europe having crossed through the Bering Strait, although it took about 10 years. So now you see why I do have this uh, infatuation with ducks, because to me, they represent the growth of quackery, and that giant duck in Toronto signifies how large quackery has grown. But it all started with the nonsense of Ocelococinum.